this short series is If You Build It. Oh, If You Build It, They Will Come. I'm going to have to say it now. Yeah. Hey, look. Put it in there, you know? I will, and you can use it in the beginning of your trailer. Hi, welcome back to another episode of... uh, if you build it, presented by uh, Get Home Safe. One day I'm just gonna have the whole Get Home Safe just fall down. <laughs> Get Home Safe. Yes. And we're here with my friend Jazz. Uh, she's the founder of Saving Space. Saving Space. And she's black. She's beautiful. And that's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So tell us about your journey as a yogi. Yogi. Mm-hmm. Uh. Definitely take that on. Mm-hmm. Uh, my journey, that it's a loaded question, but that's what we're here for. Yes. Um, and so I feel like with my, be- um, the beginning of my journey with yoga had to be my sophomore year undergrad. Mm-hmm. My older sister, shout out to Jocelyn, mm-hmm. older sisters, you know, they help you navigate through the world. Which um, school is this at? George Mason University. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shout out, you know, Jean, you what? Um, and she took me to this hot yoga class. Mm-hmm. And it was specifically, you know, a vinyasa flow, 60 minutes of just sweat. And I felt like this purification and this detox that I never knew I needed. And it was this inkling that I had that it just, I always kept coming back to it. And it was when I um, stopped competing collegiately for George Mason Mm -hmm. that I wanted to, you know, explore my body outside of competition in a way where I felt like it was challenging. And so my true journey with yoga and the lifestyle of it started maybe about... What year is this again? My context. 2021. Look, 2021. Yeah. No, I got you. Yeah, my um, my time of concept is kind of skewed, but it's really been about about 12 years now mm-hmm. um, that I have practiced continuously and developed myself to you know found myself as an instructor of yoga. What are your feelings on wellness? Wellness. Wellness is such a umbrella. Right, Mm -hmm. but essentially, it is tools, resources to allow you to be your absolute best self, and so you can do that in in multiple ways in the way that you approach it. The way that I specifically approach it is through a holistic way Mm -hmm. and using mindfulness as a tool. Okay, Um, let's speak on tools, I think that's very important, especially when it comes to the word mindfulness. Um, How do you define mindfulness? Mindfulness Mm -hmm. as the practice is the integration of being able to take a moment to pause, right? To be present within this this time frame that we have. You know, sometimes we're stuck and we are bound by the past and we worry and we stress about the future, but the true reality is all we have is this moment, right? And for us to be present mindful minded, right, is to be mindful, right? And so whether that means as you take a time to brush your teeth to really feel right if you have a manual or automatic right to feel that brush that bristle going over each and every tongue you know mm-hmm. tooth or if you're eating your favorite sweet right to, how can you savor that moment how can you be mindful or when you're with your friends and your family being able to just you know maybe low tech high engagement where you are in this moment and you're actively listening or it can always be as simple as finding your breath, right? In a chaotic moment Mm -hmm. or just to feel grounded, you know? Yeah. So in your journey of mindfulness, especially when it comes to yoga, how has the black community played a part in that growth? Yeah, great question. So I think the intersectionality of my identity is being a black woman um, and being able to navigate the space of yoga, right, and yoga studios, right. Um, when I think of yoga, first and foremost, it is the uh, the lifestyle practice, right. So what it looks like off of the mat, there are you know eight limbs of yoga. Uh, one of those limbs is asana, so it's the physical practice that like we talk about, you know, in our everyday life of like, oh, I'm about to go to yoga, right. It's like I'm I'm about to do an asana practice, and so I found myself. Um, being sometimes a little chocolate and a sprinkle of seeds of white 
people, you know, for the most part are, are people that didn't look like me. Um, and so that was something that I was aware of, but because I was doing my asana practice, I was just focusing on me, right? And one thing that kind of birthed uh, my wellness brand, Saving Space, was this um, opportunity of like running late to a class, right? Um, and, you know, let's say it's 5.30, rush hour class, just getting off of work, and you're running a little bit late. How would your practice begin, or how would you feel as soon as you got there, your instructor already had a spot laid out for you? already save space for you mm -hmm. and that mindfulness right that intentionality of knowing who is in the room and who's not in the room mm -hmm. whether that be physically or it could even be based within identities as well and so that was something that was huge for me yeah. um, in being able to identify and acknowledge who are in the room and who's not in it based off of identities mm -hmm. and then I feel like um, with yoga, you know, and this idea around it, when you think of a yoga instructor or you think of someone practicing an asana, you think of a skinny white woman wearing Lululemon, right? Yeah. And that is like a norm that we have to kind of break. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, is that yoga, the lifestyle, is a part of a culture, mm -hmm. right? That is like rich in you know, history mm -hmm. and meaning and language. Mm -hmm. And so as a black woman, right, a black cis um, gender woman, right, like it was really important for me to show up in a space where I could find myself in that, but also um, honor where yoga came from as well. Okay. Um, speaking of honor, your journey as a yogi and how you lead, can you speak on that process? Yeah, um, so how I lead. Something that's really important to me is that foundationally that we are all, you know, students and teachers of life. Yeah. And so what that means and what that looks like to me is that as I show up as a leader, I honor each and every experience that I've had off of the mat mm -hmm. and the lessons that I've also learned on the mat. Yeah. And I share that with my students and I share that with my clients. And I feel like that also gives me this openness to also learn from my surroundings, to learn from my students, you know, what, even how the way that I might, you know, my intentions and my impact are very different things. And mm -hmm. so being able to give even just feedback sometimes is really helpful as I lead, you know, and as I grow as a yogi. And when it specifically comes to saving space, mm -hmm it allows me to be able to see it on a more global, you know, on those macro levels and what we can do as a vessel to acknowledge the necess like the need for collective healing, right? Especially as we're going through this global pandemic, right? And the way that we deal with trauma individually and the way that we deal with trauma collectively. What does collective healing look like for your community? Ooh, collective healing mm -hmm. looks like being able to give people, again, the tools, the resources to show up mm -hmm. as themselves, right? And to give them the skills to even be able to identify some of the hurt. I think it's really important for us to know that hurt can show up in multiple ways in, in our actions and in our, our flexions and all of those, you know, nuances of life. Mm -hmm. And so if we're able to give people an opportunity to reconnect with themselves, and to sit with their pain in a very stiff way mm -hmm. that they can be able to heal themselves and therefore collectively heal our community, right? Mm -hmm. The work that I do on myself is not just for myself so that I can be my absolute best version. It is me healing myself for the greater whole so that, you know, this I this identity, right? Or that, what's the, um, there is this saying that, you know, hurt people hurt people. Yeah. And it's like, why is that okay? Mm -hmm. And so what I might ask you, right, is mm -hmm. what happens if we're healed? Yeah. What do healed people do? Mm -hmm. You know, and if if I'm able to be healed, and not saying, you know, being healed is perfect, right? Because none of us are. Um, I think that it, it gives us the, the, the liberty, right, and mm -hmm. the liberation. Yeah. To allow people to do the same thing for themselves. Why do you think hurt people hurt people has been normalized versus 
how heal people deal with life. Yeah, because I mean, just our society is, we, we love to focus on the negative, mm -hmm. right? We love to compare um, and it's a it's become embedded in our in our in our framework right and that hurt people hurt people it gives us this like scapegoat it gives us this green light for us to unload on our friends that um, might not be will be in a space to take on you know as simple as a conversation mm -hmm. it might be um, you know an outlash right of the Starbucks person right um, all of those things I'm, I'm, this is not also just a side note mm -hmm. okay those aren't plugs for anybody just yeah. giving you examples to make connections with your everyday life I personally am a tea drinker so I just want to go on record <laughs> saying that um, but you know um, it, it's so it's so easy it's easy to say someone hurt me and to make myself feel better right the ego is I'm gonna hurt somebody else I'm gonna take this pain and give it to someone else versus sitting with that pain and seeing how it shaped you and what lessons you can learn from that to allow that hurt to then become healed um, and so that we can kind of break those trauma bonds that we have and even the narrations that we tell ourselves around it. Can you explain what your practice involves when it comes to helping others? Yeah, specifically what it looks like mm -hmm. um, is always asking questions. And so that could be, if let's say if it's a one-on-one -on -one session, it's gonna be a lot more intimate to asking you, what have you been feeling in your body? What has been coming up for you emotionally? Um, but the reality is, is that I'm solely a guide, right? And everything that I'm giving you is simply a suggestion. And so I'm giving you, as the student, as the client, the ability to find your own power, to tap into your own you know, abundance, to be able to say like, okay, this is the story that I keep telling myself, right? And it's okay to rewrite it. And it's okay to say that like, this was at one point you might have been a shitty person, right? And it's okay to say like you're not that person anymore. And as you grow with life, because it's inevitable, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you're not growing, you're dying is one of my favorite quotes. And so yeah. we are constantly evolving. And so how can we do that gracefully? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Um, how has the study of yoga impacted your life? Oh my God, in everyday interaction. Mm -hmm. um, I think first and foremost, it's really with birth saving space mm -hmm. um, and wanting to provide a service to the need that I saw within the world. So it, it gave me my voice and it and allowed me to be a vessel to flow under something that I was truly passionate about. Um, and then just in general, right, how has it impacted it? It's in my relationships. I feel that I'm able to love deeper I feel like because I'm able to love deeper, I'm quick to forgive. Um, I'm also, you know, strong in my boundaries. So it's strengthened me in ways that like I needed improving. And it's also allowed me to be extremely real with myself and kind to myself. Let's speak on self-kindness. That's, that's things that I, <laughs> I think I hear people, myself included, we, we preach kindness we preach being kind to ourselves mm -hmm. we preach self-care we preach example of but what does it mean to be kind to yourself okay so I hear a lot of what you're saying is right mm -hmm. about kindness and about maybe that the idea around self-care right um, so like those two they're like sisters mm -hmm. right uh, self-care first and foremost foundationally for me is discipline right mm -hmm. like who you are and where you're at in the space in between is how you are self-loving yourself, self-caring for yourself and being kind to yourself, right? Um, and so it's really making that connection to the present for your future self. Mm -hmm. But when it means to be kind to yourself, right? I try to remind myself that the voice that I hear, right? Cause that's who I spend most of my time with, mm -hmm. right? Um, is like that I'm speaking to it in a voice of love, right? And so if let's say for example, something simple as a to-do list y'all my to-do list are crazy I have all over my space you'll see these extra 
okay not even like the little sticky notes the extra large ones mm -hmm. that have to-do lists on them or things that I have to do and I put exclamation marks by like okay this is a priority this guy can get to and you know if I have a little bit of time I can get to this mm -hmm. right so how I prioritize but let's say for example I wake up that morning with a list a to-do list that's full but what I'm feeling like might be fatigue right and so instead of saying like pushing through that shit or saying like oh my god I can't believe you can't do this right that negative self-talk mm -hmm. I've just eliminated it yeah. and how I've eliminated self-talk is by identifying not just within myself but like within everybody that's in my life as well like not even just in my life like people that cross paths with me mm -hmm. you know um, being kind to yourself right if you're always in a state of apology mm -hmm. right saying sorry even for myself I said what are you sorry for yeah. when people are like apologizing for what for taking up space mm -hmm. why you're worthy yeah. you know or you know expressing your needs why you should be able to do those things you know mm -hmm. and I think to be kind to yourself if you can be kind to yourself right imagine how you would treat someone else okay you know so treatment 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 I got triggered a little bit because I, <laughs> I went back to my G1 days and I was like oh my god <laughs> ultrasound I see any treatment <laughs> um you have an extensive background not just in yoga but other things so yeah. let's speak on those backgrounds and how those tie into yoga absolutely mm -hmm. so um, I went to undergrad um, for life science mm -hmm. and that was pre-physical therapy and so I had a insane love for anatomy mm -hmm. an insane love for science and so that shows up in my practice and shows up in my teaching um, and so whether that means all of the classes that I have all of my asana classes mm -hmm. there is no level there's no rank of experience right they're all foundational and so what it means for me is to be able to give people tools again right to be able to identify their body mm -hmm. right and so when I'm talking about feeling rooted I might say something as like you know for common language we tell them but I'll also say sacrum, right? So that you know that the tip of your sacrum is your coccyx, right? That little triangle bone that allows you to feel super connected. Um, or when we're talking about opening up our heart, we do a lot of work with our thoracic, right? And so that is a, a position or a part of your, you know, your spine. Um, and so that is really huge for me and it allows me to have the experience from like a healthcare aspect as well. So. One of the places, you know, um, I'm a firm believer that every job that you've had prepares you for the next one, right? Yes. And so I worked um, for Georgetown, MedStar Georgetown University Hospital for several years in their physical medicine and rehabilitation center. Mm -hmm. And so a wide range in all walks of life and rehabilitation, whether that be outpatient or inpatient. And the mantra at MedStar Georgetown University was cure personalis, and it was caring for the whole person. And so that mantra stays with me. So yeah, you know, some people might be coming to my um, my classes, my asana classes, specifically for that workout, right? And some people might be coming specifically to get connected with my meditation, right? But in reality, is that I'm here for for the entire person, right? And so that could be me telling you like hey maybe you give up that water because you know it's alkaline but how is it made alkaline you know what's alkalinity from is it man-made is it natural or well, if we're talking about food being able to say like what are some ways in, that you can treat your body and care for your body holistically um, and so um, that's why like the holistic approach is really important to me as well um, I wear the hat as a middle school educator uh, which is a very specific time in everyone's life, if you could just take a moment, dear friends, and think about <laughs> your middle school self. Mm -hmm. How that is such a pivotal time. And I tell people, right, who you are in your middle school years is essentially who you are in your 20s, okay? It's, you know, of course we, you know, we learn a little bit more and we express it a little bit different, but the root of you is that, you know, we're a kid that listen to punk rock music, okay? Mm -hmm. Or whatever your, you know, fetish was at that time. And so, 
you're still un unsure of yourself, you're still comparing yourself maybe, and you haven't really found your voice. And so as a middle school educator, I've been able to communicate to people and teach them things, all types of learners, right? And so whether that means you're an auditory learner, right? Or a visual learner or a kinesthetic learner, a um, kinesthetic. movement. So you not only have to teach, you know, touch things, but you also have to do some movement with it. And so um, one of my favorite uh, labs to do um, when we're talking about the um, circulatory and the respiratory system is we go outside and we have this one kid who's going crazy on a drum, right, who's our heart, and we have our students walking through these different blood vessels, right? And so for our kinesthetic learners, they're like, oh my God, when I was in the artery, right, I was having this type of high levels of carbon dioxide or low levels of carbon dioxide. It allows you to have more of a connection to it, especially because we're social beings. And so if I can tap into whatever type of learner you are and then throw the fact in that it's a social experience, you're that much more um, to have that as a memory, to store that and to be able to recall those moments. This also defines how you approach people when it comes to you as a yoga teacher, too. Yes. Because there are different personalities and every approach is going to be different. Exactly. Um, and so I feel like it's a gift, mm -hmm. the things that I've learned as a teacher, because um, I talk to people like they're human, mm -hmm. right? And so what that means is, you know, for babies and kids, that's huge, right? Because they are, and not even babies and, you know, adolescents, it's also our elderly, too that really struggle with this, um, the ideology of their autonomy, right? And so if you're able to see the people and treat them as if they're human, to see their humanity, right? They're that much more open, right? And if, let's say you're, you know, somebody who might be full of ego, right? And, you know, DC, favorite question is what do you do, right? What do you do? And what can you do for me, right? That's a veil that we hide behind, right? And so I feel like I'm able to kind of break that down and allow people to, you know, be open and honest with me more than they would, um, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. in general. Mm -hmm. As a, even in my life, in my journey, right? That's why I truly believe that where I, everybody in general, but like where I'm at exactly where I'm supposed to be is because I have such a heart for people. And when I ask you, dear friends, how are you? I truly mean it, right? And when people say fine, I, I have to unpack and say like, fine's not an emotion, you know? <laughs> like, it's how are state. you? Exactly, yeah. it's a state of being. And so there are times where I don't ask people how they are because I don't have the space to hold space for that for them. But I might say, how are things on your end, yeah. right? And so even those little nuances, again, is are the lessons that I've learned through my, my lifestyle practice of yoga, mm -hmm. right? Of my intentionality of my words and the things that I say. Can we talk about words mean something? So. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know my life. <laughs> <laughs> you and I used to have this moment where I would call you and be like, hey, how have you been? I used to say, hey, that's loaded. Loaded. And for the first two times, it really flew over my head. And I think I the third see. time, I caught it. And I was like, oh, it is loaded. It's loaded. <laughs> it's a loaded question. Uh, I, you know? Yeah, because I'm not only asking how you, you have been. I'm asking you to go back to the pain and the joy. What have you been working through? It's what I yeah. hear when you say, how have you been? Mm -hmm. Like, oh. You ready? You want to sit down and unpack that yeah, with me? You yeah. know, exactly. And what if that's not your day to have that conversation? Right. And maybe you're not qualified, not you, but any, somebody who's asking that question. Mm -hmm. I see that so much, right? How have you been adjusted in this, like, re-entry back into the pandemic world, pre -pan, you know, post-mid-panty world yeah, that we find no ourselves, right? right? Such, a, <laughs> such a funny thing mm -hmm. that we find ourselves in, right? But, like... I'm at a counter and someone's asking me how I'm doing. It's like, dear friend, we just got out of a global pandemic. Are you, are you truly asking me how I'm doing? Or have you automatically gotten back into that autopilot sense of these are, this is how I'm supposed to interact with people, right? And so I check them without in a very, not even asking any questions or saying it's loaded. I say I've been doing my best. 
right? And then they're like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, right? Oh yeah. shit, because it's like, to ask somebody, it's just like, do you wanna like, you know, leave behind your cash register and like, you know, have a, a drink with me real quick and we could talk about it? It's like, if not, you know, like just being present within that moment, right? And I know that's like, and I'm not saying anything about like service people, right? But just That's in just our, an example. just an example, right? Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> I we're, think we're taught to move along and not really do that. That those are our social constructs, our social norms. You know, mm -hmm. this identity or this ideology of capitalism, right? Which is another way of white supremacy. Okay, just want to be on the same page with everybody, right? This this moment right where we couldn't even pause right mm -hmm. but we have to produce mm -hmm. right and so you have to again right even in your mindfulness understand in the ways that you flow but it's like being able to even understand how our social constructs right mm -hmm. play a role in us influence us right yeah. and so being able to kind of identify within yourself how can you start to unlearn those those, those nuances that we find ourselves in right mm -hmm. to right be able to produce in the midst of you know the chaoticness that we find ourselves the chaos that we find ourselves in right mm -hmm. um, at times and so I think that's even a great example of how you can be kind to yourself right like mm -hmm. whether that means you know you need a mental day right a mental health day take it we are under capitalism and they will find somebody else mm -hmm. right to replace you mm -hmm. in that moment and they'll be okay i yeah. promise you yes. right and so you have to do what's absolute best for you until they get back on like one way that science like even helps navigate through my life like the first law of nature is self-preservation mm -hmm. right and so i abide by that every single day and so I have to do the, the absolute best that I can to preserve myself, mm -hmm. right? And so do you.